former Rwandan hotelier Paul Ruse Sabagina, who is credited with saving hundreds of lives during the 1994 genocide, has been found guilty of being part of a group responsible for terrorist attacks and has been sentenced to 25 years in prison by a Rwandan court. Ruse Sabagina, whose heroics during the genocide were portrayed in the 2004 film Hotel Rwanda, boycotted the verdict after declaring that he did not expect justice in a trial that he called a sham. The U.S. voiced its concern over Ruse Sabagina's case, saying he did not get a fair trial. Joining us now to discuss the nature of the political conflict as well as issues of justice in Rwanda is uh, Africa analyst and Dade Isaac Khomo. Dade Khomo, good to have you with us once again on the daytime update. If you could help put this into perspective for us, we know the heroics of Ruse Sabagina as portrayed in the movie uh, Hotel Rwanda. How does then a perceived hero now turn villain? Thank you, and thank you for having me, and hi to our listeners. Uh, basically, that question is, is the answer. Is this that uh, the man was a hero, uh, which is what he did during the genocide. He actually saved lives of uh, truthers. But now the man has become a villain because he actually dared to criticize the governance and the, go and the, and the government of the incumbent, uh, that is uh, Paul Kagame. That's the only thing. But Kagame does not want to be criticized by anybody. Let's so whoever criticizes him is an enemy. Let's look at the allegations against uh, Ruse Sabagina. He is accused of being part of the terrorist group MRCD FLN. Uh, tell us about this. In, in a clip that I heard uh, Ruse Sabagina saying that he was part of the formation of this group, yet he was not actually involved. Uh, what are the dynamics there? Well, the dynamics, as you can say, as you can hear from both sides, basically what has happened is this, that uh, there are many groups which have been formed which are against uh, Paul Kagame. And these groups are various types. There are some which are political, some are human rights, some are uh, pressure groups, yeah, lobby groups. And some have actually were, which have been formed, they are actually armed groups. I mean, there is not armed, there is really armed. They want to say that they're going to be armed. And there are a few armed groups. But uh, within uh, Rwanda, whoever, is, whoever comes up against the regime that's in power is a rebel and is a terrorist. So basically, in the, his going on with uh, groups, that are against or that criticize Kagame, yeah, which he is openly done so because he was living out of Rwanda on, in, in exile, running away from the regime. And he has never he has been very clear about that. Now, these people, they get together and they discuss issues. Now, it could be that he will discuss with people who were in an armed group, and so he's been classified as a terrorist. But again, you see that when it comes to people being armed or not armed against the state, the Kagame's own group, it actually began as an armed group fighting for democracy. So basically, who are, who are we to say whether these groups are legitimate or they put a legitimate, they're fighting for a legitimate cause? That's another issue. As you say, this group was initially formed to fight for democracy. The allegations against the group is that they attacked people in their homes or even in their cars. Uh, is there evidence of this? How true are these allegations? Is this the group that indeed Ruse Sabagina was part of? Well, I've not heard of that, and I cannot comment on that, because basically I've not heard of any armed group which is succeeded in fighting in Rwanda. In Rwanda, people were being attacked. It's not people who are against, fighting against the government. It's people who criticize the government. Yeah, so basically with that, you, that statement, you take it with a pinch of salt. Yeah, I mean to say that there is no armed group that has been able to operate openly in Uganda. The either groups which are based in the DRC or groups 
which have placed all over the place. They have not been able to infiltrate armed fighters in Rwanda. So basically, that's, a that that's basically the thing that we take with a pinch of salt. Bruce Sabagina has denied all the charges against him. Uh, he is a, a permanent resident of the United States. What has the uh, United States reaction been to the outcome of this trial? Well, the United States uh, outcome is just the statement that you first read out, that they actually said that he did not receive a fair trial. But they've said nothing about the manner in which he was actually sort of uh, enticed or kidnapped, yeah, or taken, in fact, taken against his will to, 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 to Rwanda. That should have been the first cause of uh, reaction of the U USA and also of Belgium, because he's a Belgian citizen. <clears throat> but you see that they're only talking about the uh, issue of a fair trial. They're not talking about the issue of being kidnapped or taken against his will. There are a multiple number of issues, as you point out, Dr. Homo, beginning with the issue of the kidnapping and then the trial, which has been said to be, quote, unquote, a, a sham. Are there going to be further steps taken by the likes of Belgium and the United States further to the statements that they have released? Is there any sort of action that they can take or that they said they would take? There will be not, no other action. And I can bet my life on that. Oh, let me not bet my life. They can come for me. And so there'll be no action taken by the USA or Belgium. Simply because Rwanda is a not country of the USA. Rwanda is a country where the USA, uh, what is called the CIA Special Forces, has a very strong presence. They've been training their special forces. They've been arming them. The Rwandan army for a long time, it has been armed by the USA. And uh, these special, uh, CIA special forces, they're not open to any scrutiny by Congress or whoever. Yeah, so you cannot see the uh, USA doing anything other than just sort of coming up with hot air. As for Belgium, they'll do nothing. Belgium is a country that has been in the forefront of actually calling for the demands release, but they've said nothing. So basically, given the position of, of Kagame and Rwanda in the geopolitics of the place, nothing is going to happen. And of what value is Rwanda to the likes of the Americas? <laughs> Rwanda is the gateway to the DRC. I'll tell you something. What is happening in the Eastern DRC? According to very serious uh, political analysts, and I'm taking Tanzanian uh, intelligence reports, they say that a group like the ADF, which is supposed to be a red tag Islamist force, which is fighting in Eastern DRC, that army is more than the D e e red tag army. The, the ADF, it is just a label that they've been given. But basically, the ADF is a very sophisticated uh, unit. That was seen when they attacked the Tanzanian uh, company, which had uh, set camp in the game reserve. The ADF attacked the Tanzanians at sunset, and they continued attacking the Tanzanians throughout the night, and they had night vision. And further to that, they actually jammed their uh, communication. Now, what Red Tech Army do has those capabilities? Uh, the Tanzanians never had those capabilities. The Tanzanians did not have any night sight, nor did they have any jamming facilities. The ADF, they retired towards daybreak, and they could, nobody could actually say where they went. So they're highly sophisticated. Now, that is the nature of, the, of, 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 of events is in that area of uh, Eastern DRC. Now you find that those are really special forces. And these are highly trained special forces with uh, highly sophisticated equipment. And these are American trained. Now that is where you come to see that Eastern DRC will never have peace because there's a lot of big interest. The issue of ADF or Kony or anybody, it is just a front for actually making sure that there is a presence and instability in the Eastern DRC.
and that is the geopolitics of the east of, of, of the region. And it has got big players. That's why you've got the CIA special forces that Congress cannot come and investigate. And Dr. Khomo, has there been a humanitarian response to Paul uh, Rosessa Bagina's uh, kidnapping as well as trial? No, there hasn't been any. In fact, uh, what's happening is just the family and friends who are actually so protesting. Should they be? But, uh, well, basically, the burden should come up. The nature of his capturing is something which should be, we should be questioned. They could have gone through Interpol. If he was a criminal, they could have gone to Interpol and demand his extradition. extradition. But they did not do that because basically they did not have a case which would be taken up and accepted by Interpol. So these are questions that people ask and that people know that nothing will happen. He has been sentenced to 25 years behind bars. As it stands now, does it look like he will serve that full term of 25 years, or could there be some sort of intervention from somewhere to try and get him well, out of prison? Well, I don't know. I mean, so with these cases, the case is political, basically. But with such cases, we find that he can be turned into a pawn, you know, somewhere down the road line that where maybe the, the, the state wants to come and soften uh, outlook from certain quarters, they may release it just to give themselves, this is the PR exercise. The Rwandan government, apart from it not brooking any nonsense from people who criticize it, but they're very sensitive, they're oversensitive, and uh, they are sensitive to criticism. And not only that, they've got a very big, they've in, they've got very big and powerful PR firms which are there to come and promote the very good image of the president and the country. Yeah, so basically somewhere down the line they could use it as a PR uh, exercise. Dr. Isaac Homo, we'll leave it at that for this afternoon. Thank you for putting all of that into uh, perspective, the humanitarian aspects as well as the political which, as in the eyes of Como states, seem to be trumping uh, the dynamics of the outcome of that trial. Thank you once again.